They didn't take anything seriously. They always thought that Hamas is less powerful than what they actually are. Three of their loved ones shot and killed by Israeli soldiers in northern Gaza. Mistaken, says the IDF, for Hamas fighters. Palestinian sources are also reporting airstrikes on Khan Yunis and Rafa in the south, with children reported to be among the casualties. As you all know, the Israeli Defense Forces, or the IDF, has been the center of attention in recent years due to their force upon Palestine, and especially in recent weeks, as the brutality of the soldiers has been documented across social media. But have you ever wondered what training they took or what missions they completed to gain become so ruthless? <laughs> Welcome to Trapdoor. Today we will discuss the most brutal Israeli soldiers out there. Yamam. The Yamam are called Israel's elite force, and you may have heard about this unit in recent years. It's formed with the world's most ruthless unit of soldiers that specialize in close quarters, combat, and offensive raids in civilian areas. Are you wondering where they began their journey? The Yamam's origin traces back to the tragic Mayalot massacre in 1974, where armed terrorists infiltrated Israel, taking 100 children hostage in a school. The rescue attempt by the IDF's Tier 1 Special Forces Unit, Sayeret Matkal resulted in the murder of 21 school children. The authorities felt that they needed a special unit just for hostage rescue, and that's when the Yamam was established. Troops were concentrated all around the cemetery as nearly 10,000 townspeople lined the gravesides. Contingents of women soldiers marched in slowly with wreaths. Then the coffins themselves. The selection process for Yamam is incredibly rigorous. The applicants are mostly seasoned combat soldiers who undergo a grueling hell week. Out of every 1,500 applicants, less than 1% pass the selection process. Once selected, recruits receive eight months of specialized training and cover various fields like sniping, reconnaissance, dog operations, and bomb disposal. Yamam operators are trained not only in combat skills but also in basic Arabic, and they dress to assimilate within the Arab population, allowing them to operate undetected in hostile areas. This ability to blend in and go unnoticed adds to the unit's effectiveness. Over the years, Yamam has played a crucial role in countering terrorism, with some of its most significant victories occurring between 2000 and 2005, and in 2014, during the Second Intifada. The unit murdered hundreds of its enemies, which supposedly reduced organized attacks in Israel. However, their achievements don't come without controversies. In the 2023 conflict between Israel and Palestine, Yamam has contributed to its fair share of bloodshed. They raided the al Hadaf neighborhood in Jenin on May 13th and fired an anti-tank missile at an establishment that housed at least 19 civilians, 11 of them minors. They also used a teenage daughter and her father as human shields to get out of the location unscathed. The IDF denied responsibility for the attack. Completely contrary to what was said, the force acted ethically and professionally in performing the mission under very heavy fire. In August 2023, Yamam fired at a 16-year-old boy and took his life in the West Bank. Bara Ahmad Fayez al kirm was traveling in a car with a few others when the Israeli special forces opened fire at him. Israeli forces routinely unlawfully kill Palestinian children with impunity, using intentional lethal force against Palestinian children when not justified, said Ayed Abu Ektaj, accountability program director at DCIP. In another daytime raid, Yamam killed a 14-year-old boy named Omar Mohammed, Omar Awadin, who was riding his motorcycle in traffic. However, due to their contributions in saving Israeli citizens, Yamam Mom has been hailed a hero by some which has overshadowed some of their cruel acts against innocent Palestinians. Sayeret Matkal Sayeret Matkal was established in 1957. It focused on intelligence and physical fitness, and its presence was kept secret until the late 1970s. However, the unit's operations are still classified, and you wouldn't be able to find much about it on the internet. Initially, the members for the unit were handpicked, but in the 1970s, the unit opened up auditions. These budding soldiers were subjected to a rigorous selection camp monitored by medical professionals and psychologists. Many say that it was modeled after the British SAS, 
or Special Air Service. The Sayaret Matkal only selects individuals with high intelligence and top-tier fitness for a two-year training program covering diverse skills. Their training, including camouflage, combat, bomb disposal, tactical shooting, navigation, reconnaissance, and survival, prepares them for field challenges and much more. The extensive training begins with four months of basic infantry and two months of advanced infantry, followed by a three-week parachuting course at the IDF Parachuting School. The training concludes with a five-week counterterrorism program at the IDF Counterterror Warfare School. During its early years, Sayeret Matkal operated secretly, with operators discreetly carrying their unit pins and shoes. Sayeret Matkal revolutionized global hostage rescue and counterterrorism in the late 1960s. Their landmark mission, called Operation Entebbe, took place in 1976, in which they creatively replicated Uganda's dictator Idi Amin to rescue hostages. The primary 29-man assault team was led by Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Netanyahu. Commandos would assault the old terminal and rescue the hostages. The unit operated from the shadows and undertook top secret missions, which positively impacted the IDF and Israel's security. They were not only working in intelligence, but also led counter-terrorism efforts and high-risk operations. Their hostage rescue missions are widely talked about because they employed innovative techniques. Despite classified missions, Sayeret Matkal's influence, showcased in the 2006 Lebanon War's Baalbek mission, remains immeasurable infiltrating a Hezbollah base and eliminating at least 10 terrorists. On the 12th of July 2006, a violent conflict erupted between Israel and neighboring Lebanon. It began when a military unit of Hezbollah, a Shia Muslim group based in Lebanon, crossed the border and ambushed a group of Israeli soldiers. However, their success came at a price. The Israeli unit responded to the attack with more airstrikes, claiming the lives of many Lebanon citizens. The clash went on for 34 days. Approximately 1,200 Lebanese people died and 4,400 were wounded, mostly civilians. Israel, meanwhile, reported 158 deaths, most of them soldiers. Over six decades, they have earned a reputation as one of the world's most elite special forces units, instilling fear in the hearts of Israel's enemies and inspiring inspiring future generations of special forces operators, but controversies remain where they had to take the lives of innocents to fulfill their aims. Shayatet 13 Shayatet 13 is the IDF's elite Marine Commando unit with roots in Palyam, and it boasts a history similar to the U.S. Navy SEALs. Their 20-month training is one of the IDF's toughest, and it begins with a four-day selection, leading to six months of infantry training. The following stages cover advanced methods such as weapons and parachute training, maritime warfare, and rigorous physical exercises. Recruits then progress to four weeks of combat diving. They also master underwater skills, equipment use, and techniques for challenging scenarios. The next training phase lasts about a year and is the most rigorous. Recruits are exposed to specialized training in their chosen unit within Shayatet 13 and face some of the most physically and mentally demanding tasks that push them to their limits. The process is designed to identify the most dedicated individuals. Only the strongest and most determined make it through the final phase and earn the right to be part of this exclusive and elite unit. These members are equipped to undertake dangerous and high-stakes missions that showcase the extraordinary feats of Shayatet 13. In the 1973 Yom Kippur War, Shayatet 13 infiltrated Egypt's ports, sinking vessels with deadly precision. Their stealth and fear-inducing tactics showcase their ruthless and unyielding capabilities. <laughs> Shayatet 13 operates covertly in the Middle East. They partake in classified missions such as gathering intelligence, leading counter-terrorism efforts, and conducting maritime operations. They are internationally renowned because of their unwavering dedication to ensure the protection of Israel's maritime borders. Unit Egos if you're an avid researcher of military units of the world, you may have heard of Unit Egos many times. It's an expert in guerrilla warfare and counterterrorism, and is a crucial asset for the IDF in potential conflicts with northern enemies. They operate in diverse environments like Judea and Samaria, the Gaza Strip, and enemy territories in Lebanon and Syria. But you may be wondering, how did it achieve such strategic importance? Well, taking a close look at its origins, training methods, and achievements during conflicts like the Second Lebanon War, and Operation Protective Edge, 
shows us how it became so adept in warfare. After the Yom Kippur War in the 1970s, the IDF disbanded it due to some issues. But after the Hezbollah guerrilla campaign in the 1990s, Unit Egos was resurrected because of their capability in unconventional warfare and operating in small teams to counter evolving threats. This time, former IDF commanders and paratroopers from elite units such as Shayatet 13 joined Unit Egos. The recruits had to go through a rigorous 16-month training, which is believed to be IDF's toughest and most demanding training phase yet. They had to take tests on long-range navigation as well, which set them apart from other military units. Since 1995, Egos has played a vital role in conflicts with Hezbollah through their adaptability, making it a formidable asset in Israel's defense against threats. One of their prime achievements is the 2006 Lebanon War against Hezbollah, in which they disrupted their missile launchers. In Operation Cast Lead in 2009, Unit Egos commanders managed to neutralize a threat in Gaza. However, they also ended up taking the lives of hundreds of Palestinian civilians. As fierce battles were waged on the ground, the onslaught continued from the air. Airplanes, tanks, artillery and naval boats pounding Gaza as Israeli forces took up positions inside the Strip. The uninterrupted airstrikes, artillery shelling, and ground operations resulted in the killing of 1,183 Palestinians, including 333 children and 114 women, and the injury of over 5,300. In the Second Intifada, Egos conducted targeted operations against Palestinian militant groups and civilians alike to gather intelligence and protect the security of Israel. The conflict ended up claiming the lives of thousands of innocent Palestinians. The side of a right-wing Israeli politician in the third holy side of Islam sparked a major Palestinian uprising. And when it ended five years later, around a thousand Israelis had been killed, while Palestinians were left with more than 3,000 dead. In the 2006 Lebanon War, Ego's operatives successfully neutralized Hezbollah fighters and dismantled their infrastructure. During Operation Protective Edge in Gaza in 2014, Ego's destroyed Hamas's terror attack tunnels through direct confrontations and neutralized over 50 enemies. However, while doing so, they turned thousands of Palestinians homeless and many civilians had to lose their lives. Some 2,205 Palestinians, including 722 militants and over 500 children, and 70 Israelis, 64 of whom were soldiers, were killed. Thousands of Palestinians were wounded. Over 18,000 of their homes were destroyed. Some 470,000 were displaced. And large areas of Gaza were essentially razed. Would Israel have taken the time to confirm that those children were out of the school before you fired? Egos received praise for outstanding service in conflicts like the Second Lebanon War and Operation Protective Edge, but their achievement remains eclipsed by the numerous deaths of Palestinian men, women, and children. But where are they now? Today, they continue intensive training, including high-altitude training, in areas like the mountains of Cyprus and the Golan Heights. If you're wondering if they were involved in the 2023 conflict with Palestine, yes, they were. Unit Egos was dispatched to raid cities and camps, where they infiltrated homes of civilians and took lives. During the raids, dozens of Palestinians have been killed by Israeli security forces, either while committing attacks or during clashes. Several bystanders have also been killed, including a teenage girl who was returning home from studying. Shaldag. This unit is originally called Unit 51001, but you might know it as Shaldag. It's a secret force within the Israeli Air Force, or IAF, which originated after the 1973 Yom Kippur War for highly covert and serious operations, such as neutralizing enemy missile batteries. Evolving over the years, Shaldag became an integral part of the IAF's Special Airborne Forces in 1986. This elite unit is flexible, always ready for battle, and highly adaptable in controlling air traffic during wars. Shaldag soldiers go through a 22-month training that tests their physical and mental endurance with a focus on navigation and long forced marches. Specialized courses cover parachuting, counter-terrorism, and air-to-ground cooperation. The training includes simulated enemy capturing experiences and gives the soldiers a true taste of high-risk missions in various environments. But not only in recent years. Shaldag has previously resolved major conflicts, such as Operation Orchard in 2007, in which they destroyed a suspected Syrian nuclear reactor. It's hardly a secret that Israel destroyed what its intelligence services said was a Syrian nuclear reactor almost 11 years ago. 
but now it's officially acknowledging that fact and detailing the operation for the first time. In 2014, during the IDF's ground offensive, Shaldag eliminated terrorists and destroyed Hamas cross-border attack tunnels in Gaza. The unit's unwavering commitment consistently safeguards Israel's security, but sometimes at the expense of innocent blood. <laughs> Shaldag is also well known for rocket strikes, like they did in intelligence operations, like Mole Cricket 19 in 1982. The goal of Operation Mole Cricket 19 was to eliminate the threat and destroy the Syrian missile batteries. Shaldag also showed their prowess in humanitarian missions, such as Operation Moses in 1984 and Operation Solomon in 1991. Despite being a secret unit, their achievements have benefited in protecting the Israeli cause and have garnered acclaim. However, the nature of their operations remains highly criticized due to the loss of thousands of innocent civilians in their hands. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe, and let me know who you are the most scared of.